It's safe to say that country music sensation Shania Twain's love story is anything but generic. It's a story that involves all the ups and downs of a cinematic masterpiece. Here's a look inside the marriage of one of country music's all-time biggest stars. Twain, like so many celebrities before her who reached mega fame, craved time away from the spotlight. As she explained on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, I just really needed to take a break. Switzerland was just a place that I could go and be very quiet. And I became a mom. And it was just a great place to start that part of my life. It was there that Twain met Frederick and Mary Ann Tebow. On Oprah, Frederick dished, my ex-wife started to work for them, and that's how we got to know them. Mary Ann was Twain's assistant and managed Shania and her then-husband Robert Mutt Lang's 46-room chateau in Switzerland. According to the Belfast Telegraph, Twain told DeGeneres, Fred and I did not have a one-on-one -on -one relationship at all. It was quite a formal relationship, really. The families grew close and generally spent holidays together. As the singer explained on Oprah, Fred and Mutt were good friends, and Marianne and I were good friends. She was my confidant, somebody who understood what my concerns were in my marriage. Twain added that she always trusted Marianne's judgment, saying, I said, Marianne, don't you think my husband is acting strange? And she said, no, I don't see anything strange. When Tebow discovered his wife Marianne was having an affair with Twain's husband Mutt, he told Twain, and spoiler alert, it didn't go well. As Frederick revealed on Oprah, I did discover the affair with my wife and Mutt, and I said, guys, now you have to tell Shania. This is ridiculous. You just owe her that, and they didn't want to do it. So I had to tell her. Then Frederick found phone bills and hotel receipts and recalled seeing lingerie and a garter belt in Marianne's suitcase from one of her solo trips, according to the Daily Mail. Twain admitted to being in denial and wanted an explanation from Mutt and Marianne. She told DeGeneres, I called her up. I wanted to give her the opportunity to tell me herself without me accusing her. And she said, No, I don't understand why you'd think I would ever hide anything from you. Mutt and Marianne denied having an affair. After Marianne ignored Twain's calls and changed her phone number, Twain emailed her saying, Please leave us in peace. If you could see me crying and suffering, maybe you would have pity. Find love somewhere else from someone else that isn't hurting two families so much. Twain's story proves fame and wealth don't protect against adversity. Specifically, the double whammy of discovering your hubby and your BFF are off in cahoots without you? A bummer to say the least. She explained to Oprah, suffering does not discriminate. No one is above this type of low. A broken Twain explained she'd basically given up on life, adding, there were days when I really just was like, I just don't even really care if tomorrow comes. In addition to the nightmare she found herself in, Twain noticed her anxiety negatively impacted her Lyme disease. She told the Belfast Telegraph, I lost my voice from Lyme disease. The stress of the divorce added to the dysphonia, which is a tension around the larynx. The divorce is part of it, but it wasn't the root of it. Twain was forced to undergo multiple throat surgeries and feared that she'd lose the vocal cords that built her career. She told Today, It was devastating. I was very, very sad about it, to the point where I felt I had no other choice but to just accept it. The invasive surgery did affect Twain's voice, but birthed a new gravel tone that she's enthusiastic about. She said, I think it's kind of sexy. I'm never going to have my old voice again. I'm okay with that. I found a new voice, and I like it. New love can be the furthest thing from your mind while dealing with severe heartbreak. But as Twain gushed on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, an unexpected love blossomed out of a strenuous shared experience. She explained, We slowly became very, very good friends. We had many months of just trying to make sense of everything. Holding each other up was a very difficult time emotionally for both of us, and really found something very beautiful in the end and unexpected. Inspired by Tebow's calm composure, the Canadian country singer said she gradually began to see him in a new light. She told Redbook, You see all their anger, how they handle their grief, their desperation, and he did it beautifully and was able to give me support at the same time. I admired him first. I think that's very important. Of course, every woman has a laundry list of qualities she looks for in a life mate. In addition, sharing a life with someone who you can learn from and who inspires you to be a better person also falls somewhere on the list under Swiss banking account. Luckily for Twain, Tebow had all the above. 
Swiss-born Frederick Thibault is an executive for the food and beverage company Nestle. Born on August 1, 1970, Thibault is five years younger than Twain. It's reported that Thibault even fell in love with music as a kid and had aspirations of becoming a singer, according to Country Daily. While Brad Pitt may not impress Twain much, she knows the moment she realized she'd fallen for Thibault. She dished to Red Book, I got to observe Fred going through the same thing I was, and I admired how he handled it. That is where I fell in love with him, because he was so exemplary in every way. Twain even credits Thibault for being her quote, count to ten, she explained. Fred has shown me through example how to stop, listen, think, and then express myself, instead of immediately saying things I might wind up regretting. Trust me, that's hard for a girl who grew up cursing hockey refs. Twain made her relationship official on her 44th birthday on August 29, 2009 on her website. She wrote, A dear friend and true gentleman by the name of Fred has been the most constant companion of support for both Asia and me. And having gone through the suffering of his family splitting apart at the same time, under the same extreme circumstances, he understood me better than anyone. We leaned on one another through the ups and downs, taking turns holding each other up. We've become stronger and closer through it all, as have our children, Asia and Johanna. According to People magazine, Thibaut finally proposed the following year with a three-carat solitaire diamond ring. On Oprah, Twain's beau said, She's a true angel. That's what I think. On January 1, 2011, the pair married in Puerto Rico in an intimate ceremony. Twain proudly told People, My closest friends and family say they haven't seen me this free-spirited and happy in years. And it's true. It's definitely true. In this love story, Twain and Tivo prove the honeymoon phase never has to end. Twain gave fans a glimpse into her fairy tale relationship when she spoke about Tivo's romantic gestures to Red Book. She revealed, The other day I was showering and he had to go out. He knew I hadn't eaten yet, and I had to go somewhere too. So before he left, he prepared me a salad. I could hear chopping and singing, and I'm thinking, what is he doing? I came out of the bathroom, and he'd set up a little table with a note saying, I love you, Fred. And there was a glass of wine and this beautiful salad with little tomatoes and flowers all around the edges. Prince Charming himself confessed the inspiration behind his romantic behavior, saying, To express my love, words are not enough. I'm more in love with her every day. Chocolates and flowers aside, Twain went on to tell Red Book about what drew her to him. She explained, Fred is not only nice, he's incredible, he's attentive, he shows what he feels, and that's a quality that could come in any shape or size and be admired. He's too good to be true. I'm loving every minute of it. The Canadian country singer may be one of the world's biggest stars, but behind closed doors, Twain is just like anyone else when it comes to enjoying romantic pastimes with her spouse. She told Red Book, Kissing, talking, playing tennis, Fred hits hard and keeps me on my toes. I'd chase a ball for him any day. And let's be honest, famous or not, no couple escapes cheesy nicknames. The country singer admitted, We stare at each other a lot and call each other lovey names. I'm Sunshi, short for sunshine, and he's beauty man because he's so darn beautiful. Undoubtedly handsome, Twain said her hubby's eyes are his best physical feature. She added, They're gentle, intelligent, and alluring, and such a beautiful shade of green. Fred's and Asia's eyes are exactly the same shade. The songstress noted that Tebow's compassion for others is what she loves most about her husband. She explained, Fred is a true gentleman. He waits for everyone else to begin eating before taking a bite. He's always concerned about world affairs and the interest of others. From chart-topping success and starting a family, to losing it all and coming back stronger than ever, Twain has come full circle. Reflecting on her experience on Oprah, the artist revealed that she believes life has a way of working out the way it's supposed to. She said, Sometimes I think bad things have to happen to us to give us perspective. The Honey I'm Home singer elaborated further during an interview with the Belfast Telegraph explaining, I had to meet this horrible, betraying friend in order to meet this extraordinary man. And I had to meet Mutt to have this child who is the absolute center of my life. Twain revealed that over time, she was able to fully process and understand the collapse of her marriage with Lang. She told Oprah, The fact that the marriage broke down is nobody's fault. 
that is just a mutual breakdown of communication between two people. And even though Twain admitted to being partially responsible for the fallout of her marriage, she's grateful for the emotional evolution and strength it gave her. She told the Belfast Telegraph, I never thought it was entirely my fault, but I certainly felt that I obviously missed something. Where have I been? Hello? How dumb can one be? I just felt very stupid. You put things in perspective over time. Amidst new love and re-strengthened vocal cords, Twain set her sights on resurrecting her singing career. But it wasn't as if she could just pick up from where she left off. She told the Belfast Telegraph, There were three albums and 15 years of our collaboration. So the fear was not knowing where to begin after all that time, and knowing that the expectations would be high, because Mutt is a genius. Twain revealed her doubts pioneering a new path, adding, There were a lot of moments when I was just too afraid to tackle it. Maybe I should just leave it where it was. Ultimately, Twain decided her new material had to come from the heart, which produced a darker tone, both vocally and lyrically. Who's Gonna Be Your Girl are lyrics expressing the dark and lonely crumbling of Twain's marriage. The singer explained to Rolling Stone, It's about feeling unappreciated and knowing that you are secondary, having to live with someone that has different priorities and accepting that you're not the most important thing in a person's life. Yikes. Meanwhile, Swinging With My Eyes Closed is a pretty self-explanatory track, yet heart-wrenching, everything considered. On September 29, 2017, Twain released her fifth studio album, Now, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.